This video provides some basic information on how to use this Stuart SMP10 digital melting point apparatus. You can probably derive the greatest benefit from this video, however, by first familiarizing yourself with the basic concepts of melting point determination as they apply to preparative organic chemistry. And if you haven't already done so, you should read the related material in section 210 of your lab manual. Melting point is one of the main physical properties in preparative organic chemistry because the melting point of a compound can give us important qualitative information regarding the purity of a sample synthesized in the lab, and it can also help us in identifying a chemical compound. Your lab has recently been equipped with a number of Stuart SMP10 digital melting point apparatus. This apparatus is in addition to the other two types of melting point apparatus available, the Buki automatic melting point apparatus and the Fisher-Johns melting point apparatus, which Stuart apparatus will likely replace in the future. But do note that our supply of Stuart apparatus may not be large enough at this time to guarantee availability when you need to obtain a melting point, so you'll likely have to be familiar with all three apparatus. Separate videos on each of these other melting point apparatus are available on our YouTube channel and can be accessed via our website at capuchem.ca slash labs. Now the Stuart melting point apparatus uses a simple keypad where the temperature is selected, measured and displayed digitally. Temperatures are displayed to one degree resolution, which is typically the precision used in reporting melting points obtained in preparative organic chemistry. Easy to follow instructions are printed directly on the instrument. The SMP10 is designed to give both quick and accurate results and is easy to use. Melting point samples are placed in a glass capillary tube, which is placed in the aluminum block inside the sample chamber. The block is heated and the sample observed through the magnifying lens until melting occurs. The temperature may then be easily read from the LED display. In order to avoid the necessity to continually watch the sample, the SMP10 is equipped with a plateau function. This allows a temperature to be set a few degrees below the expected melting point, and the machine will then heat to this temperature very rapidly, at about 20 degrees per minute, and hold it until the operator is ready to begin measuring. When measuring is started, the apparatus will heat slowly at 2 degrees per minute, from the plateau temperature until melting occurs, and this slow rate of heating allows accurate melting points to be obtained. When a unit is plugged in and switched on, the LED display will display the actual block temperature, and the sample chamber will be illuminated. If the unit has been used recently, the block may be too hot for your sample. If this is the case, press the stop button and allow the unit to cool before proceeding. In this demonstration, we are going to check the melting point of fluorinone. The literature melting point of fluorinone is reported to be around 83 to 85 degrees. So, depending upon the purity of this sample, we can expect it to melt pretty close to this temperature. The purer the sample, the closer its melting point should be to the literature value. The solid sample must be placed inside a capillary tube which is sealed at one end. If the sample is too granular, packing it into the capillary tube can be made easier by first lightly crushing it using a test tube and a watch glass. The open end of the capillary tube is tapped into the powdered solid, inverted and tapped several times on the bench top to allow the solid to settle at the bottom of the tube. To tightly pack the solid material at the bottom of the capillary tube, it can be dropped from a height through a long glass tube. And here we see the long glass tube. And here we see the capillary tube being dropped down through the long glass tube. Its fall is cushioned by a rubber stopper. This may need to be done a few times to ensure good packing. You should try for a packed sample size at the bottom of the tube of a few millimetres. You now need to decide on a suitable plateau temperature. This should be about 10 degrees below the expected melting point of the sample. Check that all three function lights are extinguished. If not, press the stop button. 
Press and hold the Plateau Set button, the light will flash and the display will now show the current plateau temperature. The desired plateau temperature can now be set using the arrow keys to scroll the display up or down as required. Release the set button and the new plateau temperature is set and all the function lights will go out. The plateau temperature can be checked at any time during the operation of the machine by pressing and holding the plateau set button. This will not interfere with the melting point determination. Insert the packed capillary tube into any one of the two holes on the side of the heating block. and This can be done from either side of the block. Look down the magnifier and position the tube so that you can see the sample clearly. Be careful because the heating block may be hot. Press the start key. The unit will quickly heat up to the plateau temperature while the heating light is on. Once the plateau temperature is reached, the plateau light will be illuminated as well as the heating light. And you should wait until the plateau light comes on before proceeding. This ensures that the temperature is stabilized. Press the start button again and the block will begin to heat at the ramp rate of 2 degrees per minute. At this stage, notice that the plateau light will go out and the ramping and heating lights will both be illuminated. Continue to check on the sample through the magnifier until the solid begins to melt. Note the temperature from the display. Continue to observe the melting sample until the melting is completed. And now record the melting range. After the melting range is recorded, press the stop button. All the lights will now go out and the unit will cool down to ambient temperature. If you need to repeat the determination, pressing the start button again will cause the unit to return to the plateau temperature instead of ambient. The heating light will come on even if the temperature is above the plateau and the unit is in fact cooling. Otherwise, the capillary tube can be removed and discarded in the glass disposal container. We hope this video has allowed you to gain some insight into the methods of obtaining melting points. This is something that will become a matter of routine as you proceed through preparative organic chemistry. Remember that complete instructions on the use of all our melting point apparatus, together with instructions on sample preparation, are in section 2, the technique section of your lab manual. And for more videos on the use of instrumentation in your lab, check out our website at capuchem.ca labs. And thank you for watching.